Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to go over the physical installation and software setup of a RTC module on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B running Ubuntu 24.04. So what is an RTC module you may ask? A RTC module is a little device that stores the date and time and is backed by a battery that is installed on the module. That way the Raspberry Pi will be able to get its date and time from the module rather than over the network. This can be useful in cases where there is no internet or network connectivity to the Pi. In terms of the equipment I'm going to be using for this project, I have a Raspberry Pi 4B 8 gig model, a FLIRC case or flirt case. This is optional, you don't need it, but I've got one, so I'm just gonna use it. A Raspberry Pi 4 power adapter, a SanDisk 128 gig micro SD card with Ubuntu 24.04 installed. You can use any micro SD card you want. It doesn't have to be 128 gig or SanDisk, just one that actually works with the Raspberry Pi. A micro SD to SD card adapter, just so that I can convert it to work with the actual SD card reader. And then an SD card reader to go with that. A GPIO based RTC battery module, in my case, it's got a DS3231 chipset on it, a CAT6A or CAT7 Ethernet cable or Wi Fi, depending upon what your network's set up as, and lastly, the Raspberry Pi imager application to get Ubuntu 2404 installed on the SD card. So, for this project, I'm going to start out with a fresh installation of Ubuntu 2404. If you need to do the same, I have another video that goes over how to image a micro SD card with Ubuntu 2404. There's a link in the video description below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the future. With that said, let's get started. So let's have a look at the uh, RTC module first. I think I picked this up off eBay for maybe a tenner or it was maybe from Pi Hut in the UK. It's pretty straightforward basic module. Uh, the chipset on this particular one is a DS3231, which is quite common, the other one being the DS1307. So in terms of installation, for this module I need to install it in pins one, three, five, seven, nine on the GPIO header of the Pi 4 as per the manufacturer's instructions. So let's uh, pop that on the header. So it, the bulk of the module needs to go inwards towards the actual Pi. So it'll cover over what I believe is the Wi-Fi module. Can be a bit stiff to install this thing. There we go. Uh, popped a bit of black tape over it just to stop it coming in contact with the case that it's going into. Better safe than sorry, I suppose. So, modules installed. Let's get to in configuring it in Ubuntu. Now that the RTC module is installed in the Pi, I've powered up the Pi, connected it to network, and I'm just going to SSH over to it now. So before we go any further, first thing you need to do, ideally you don't have to, but recommended is to install the latest updates. Now you can do that with apt update and then apt upgrade. After that's done, we need to install two additional packages. The first one is the i2c-tools package uh, that contains a collection of software that's required to interact with the i2c bus on a Raspberry Pi. And the second package is the util-linux-extra package, which contains a collection of tools, but we only just need one out of it, which is hwclock, which is used to interact with the RTC battery. The reason we're having to install that one is because Ubuntu took out the HW clock program from base installation of Ubuntu. So we've got to install it separate, which is kind of annoying, but hey. So to install those two packages, very simply, we just need to run sudo apt install dash y 
i2c-tools and util-linux-extra. Should ask you for a password. If it does, just put your password in. And that's those two installed. So first off, let's just do a quick check of what the current date is on the machine. So date, yep, that's fine. Once that's done, we need to check to make sure that the RTC module has been detected. To do that, we just run a simple tool called I2C detect. Do that using sudo. We can see that that's been picked up at address 68, so row 60, column 8, which is good. If it didn't pick it up, then where it says 68 would basically be like everything else on that list would just be two dashes. If it doesn't pick it up and you get those two dashes where 68 is, you might want to just check to make sure your RTC battery module is installed correctly. Now. What we need to do is configure it to run up to be actually detected at boot time and activate because uh, by default because there's a sustained six eight is actually not active so what we need to do is add one line to the slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to elevate my privileges to root don't really do this at all it's a bad practice but it's the only way you could do it because if i didn't do it this way i'd just get a permission denied error so i'm going to go run this command which basically takes a simple echo and puts in this line of text so dt overlay equals i2c dash rtc comma ds3231 now, the DS3231 part, you may need to change depending upon what your RTC module is. If your RTC module is a 1307 or DS1307, then you just change this to DS1307. We'll pull that back to 3231. Now, once the system's rebooted, because once you've done this, you have to restart it to make it work. When I do a quick diagnostic, it'll actually say DS1307. And the reason for that is because the DS3231 and DS1307 use the same command set. So they just keep it all within one driver. So if you see that in what I see late, what I'm going to show you later on, then you'll know why. Okay, that's been added. So we're going to exit out of that. And copy this text file just so I can show you it. And I'm going to do a quick more of that. As you can see, it's been added right at the bottom of the file. So at this point, what I need to do is reboot the machine and then SSH back in. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, we're back into this machine again after it's restarted. So first thing I want to do is check to see if it's been detected on the I2C bus again. So I'm just going to run sudo I2C detect dash Y1 again. Enter my password. And now instead of saying 68, it says UU. That basically depicts that the module is now active and can be accessed. So now that that's the case, before I want to before I go any further, I want to make sure everything's in order to make sure everything's showing as active in boot. So to do that, I'm just going to go sudo d message pipe grep rtc dash, and that should show that it's there. So it'll say rtc ds thirteen oh seven again. That's because it 
the 3231 and 1307 pretty much share the same command set so it's just using that driver instead to inter interact with my RTC module and you can see that it's setting the system clock based on what's stored in the RTC module and we've got a registered RTC module as RTC0 so all good no problems there so I've used this RTC module before, but what I'm about to show you might show might seem different for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the contents of the RTC module. So to do that, I'm just going to go sudo hw clock dash r and dash r basically just means read the contents. And there we go. You can see what the date, the time. And now that we're done with that, your obviously your time might look a little bit differently to mine because if it's a brand new RTC module, it'll probably have a completely different date on it. Now, if I then go and do date again, so this is reading off the system time rather than the RTC module, you can see that time's fine. Now, if you're happy with the time that you're getting from your system, then what you can do is write that to the hardware clock or the RTC module rather, just by doing a similar command, but instead of dash R, we just do dash W, press enter, and then it's written to the RTC module. So at that point, when the next time you boot up, it'll just basically take that time from the RTC module and put that as the system time. And that pretty much is all you need to do to get that working. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.